Hey there and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be talking to you about InShot, the mobile video editing tool that I use all the time on my mobile phone when I want to edit on the go. My name is Anita Wong and I'm a digital visibility strategist and tech coach and I help you to use the tools at your fingertips to get the visibility that you desire. So please do subscribe to my channel and if you love this video give me the thumbs up and if you have any questions whatsoever drop them in the comments and I'll reply to them as soon as possible. Okay so let's jump into InShot and show you how to use it. So just going to start here inside the App Store. So this is the InShot video editor, as you can see from my mobile phone that I'm sharing. There is a free account on it and you can do the InShot Pro. I personally have the InShot Pro because it has some additional features that I think are really, really beneficial. And if you're going to use InShot as your mobile go-to video editing app, then it's probably worth you going for the Pro. But just try it out and see whether you like how it works. So let's open it up and let's show you inside. So inside the actual app itself, you land on the home page. You can go to the video option and you can see that you have videos you've already created and the drafts, and then you can click the new button and upload a video. There's also this cool photo option where you can bring in photos from your camera roll as well. And also there is a collage option where you can choose between one and nine photos to create a beautiful collage. So I'm just gonna show you the video editing option in today's video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a video. So you can click this, click new and upload a video from your camera roll, or you can use a video that you've already got that you've saved. So if I just show you the process, click new, I'm just gonna grab a quick 10 second video and I'm going to click okay. This is going to bring that video up into my video editor. Just gonna really briefly go through some of the navigation lines along here so that you can see what everything does. So the canvas over here, changes the size. So I recorded this video in portrait, so it's automatically identified it as a TikTok or say like an Instagram reel. You can change the size of the video frame by choosing any of the options in this area. Now, of course, if you are a pro account holder, you have all of them. If you're not on the pro, you may have some restrictions. You can, of course, zoom in and zoom out of the photo, the video as well. And you can also, if you zoom out, choose the background by making it blurry or you can add a color, it's entirely up to you. So now that we've decided our canvas size, there is the option to add music in here. Now, personally, I don't use the music inside this app because I tend to use the music which is on the social platform of choice. So I'm going to upload this video to TikTok. I will use the TikTok music. Instagram Reels, I will use Instagram Music. Facebook, I will use the Facebook music. YouTube, I will use the YouTube music. That way you never have a problem with music rights and things like that. Stickers is an option where you can add a sticker. So you can have stickers from your own photo album. You can have GIFs, which is the one I use. Just type in what you want. So let's say if I did an arrow, click search, and it will bring up lots of different arrows that you can choose from. All you have to do is go ahead and click it, it will place it on the, the video, click the video, and then you can move this around the screen using your fingers. You can make it um, turn around, get bigger, smaller. You can do all sorts of different things with it. You can flip it around as well. You know, it's entirely up to you what you do. As you can see from the bottom as well, you have your timeline down the bottom here. And each element that you add to your video has an extra line. So as you can see, the sticker has created this line along the top. Now you can actually drag the sticker length along by just pulling the toggle left and right. You can, of course, click on the toggle at the end and it will ask you whether you want it to go all the way through to the end of the video or just to that particular clip that you've got. So if you're uploading multiple clips, you may want to like bypass the clip cuts and go right to the end of the video, or you may just wanna keep it within the clip. So it's entirely up to you. So if I go video end, it's going to take it to the end of my video. And of course, I can just move it around and decide where I want it if I want it at all. If you don't want this to have to stay, you just click the go back button. If you do want it to stay where it is, you just click the checker and you're all set to go. If you need to edit it at any point, all you need to do is click on the sticker option again, and then you can go in and edit what you want to edit. So I'm going to just remove that and click OK. 
The next one along is text. Again, you click on the text. It's automatically going to give you a text box. I'm just going to put a hi there. And then what happens in here, you do get this like navigation, like cockpit of all the text. So as you can see, I've got color that will open up all the colors and I can choose from an array of colors in here or I can do the Doppler and choose from the actual picture or the image that I'm and the video that I'm using. There is some different elements. You've got border, so it gives you a border. You have shadow, so it gives a shadow. The one I'm using at the moment with the background is a label, so I can change the background color if I want to. I can also change the how, how visual it is, so you can make it see-through or semi-opaque. You can also change the font. So if I want to change the font to a different one, I can go ahead and do that, and it will change the fonts for me. There's a limited amount of fonts in here, but it's enough for you to you know, do what you need to do. You've also got the, the font position, so you can have left, right, center. You can also change the height of the font and the size of the letters and things like that. So you can play around with that. There is also this neat motion automation where you can actually do different things with the font and you can make it timed, how long it lasts. You can also do wiggles, squiggles, rotations and all sorts. So you can really go to you know, have a really good play with this option. Once you're done and you're happy, you click the checker or the tick button. You can position it using your fingers. And of course, again, you can decide whether you want it at the beginning, middle, end, or within a clip. And you can just click on the ends to decide whether you want it at the video beginning or if you want it at the video end. So it's entirely up to you how you do that. Once you're happy, you just go ahead and click the checker and you're all set to go. There's a filter option where you can change the filter of your actual video. So you can have an effect if you want to. So you can do different effects with it and you can, you know, do all sorts of different things with it as well. So you can play around with those, which is really good. Once you're happy with that, you can also do filter. So you can change the way your video looks. So you can really go home and play around with that if you want to. So that's also another cool thing to do. If you wanted to adjust the temperature, the tone and the, the tint and things like that, you can do that as well in here. And you can just change that according to what you need to do. Coming along is the photo in photo option. So this is where you do the PIP. This is really cool if you want to add something in particular to your video. So you can just choose another video or you can choose a photo. So maybe like I might do this one. Just go ahead and click it and it will add that to your video for you. And then you can just put that anywhere you like. And of course, you can resize that according to what you want. Once you've resized and you're happy, you just go ahead and click the plus the tick and you're all done. Now, the beauty with this app, and this is what I like about it the most, is the way that you can edit the clips. So you can pre-cut them or you can split them. I use the split option all the time. So the split option is the best way of actually working with this tool. So if I were to move my timeline up and down and I wanted to cut it in any particular place, I would just go ahead and use the split option and it will split the scene for me. Then all I need to do is I can either reduce the scene or make it big. If you want to delete the scene, all you have to do is cut it down to where you want it and then click the delete option and it will cut that out for you. So that's super easy. If you make a mistake and you want to redo it, you just do the back button and it will undo that delete and then you can go ahead and start again. Another thing that it does is it will allow you to change the volume of the actual video that you're doing by clicking on the volume button and then you can adjust the volume depending on the clips. You can also extract the audio as well. So if you wanted to take the audio out, you could. You also have the option to change the speed, whether that's speeding your video up or slowing your video down. So that's also a good option. And you can also click the replace button to replace the video. You can also duplicate a scene as well. You can crop the scene. So if you wanted to crop a particular scene and make it a little bit more dynamic, you could do that as well. You can do lots and lots of different things with this. You can also rotate a clip if you want to. So you can have a really good fun with your edits. 
and you can flip it so it's the other way around. You can freeze your frame, you can reverse your video, and of course you can go into your main settings where you can set the video resolution, your frame rate, and your format. If you change your format, you can do MP4, which is what it should be on anyway, and you can stick these to the frame. So that was a real whistle top run through of how you can use the editing features inside of this particular app. Now, I've only shown you what you can do with one video. If you wanted to add a video or an image to this clip, all you'd need to do is go ahead and click that ready orange plus button and it will ask you to bring in either a blank scene where you could perhaps do a color and some text or a video or photo if you wanted to do blank it will just bring in a blank scene for you that's where you perhaps could do your introduction add some text add some text on and introduce your video so and so on click go and of course you can adjust that by the length and breadth and again you can adjust the clip as well so once you're there you can adjust the length of this so you can have a shorter introduction and if you wanted to add in more video clips you just go ahead and press the plus again grab a video or a photo from your camera roll so say maybe if i just wanted a quick photo like so i could just bring that in to the thing by clicking the plus button and it will upload that in for me. So that's how easy it is to add all of these things into your video. Once you've done your video and you're happy with everything, so you've edited it, you've added your text, you've added your filters, you've done everything that you want to do with it, all you have to do is click the upwards button at the top right, and it will give you the option to save it. You can adjust the resolution, the frame rate, and the format there, and you can just go ahead and click save. You do need to keep this window open while it saves the video for you. But once it's done that, everything will be hunky dory. It's going to then save it automatically to your camera roll, but it also gives you the option to share it directly to YouTube, to Instagram, to WhatsApp, to Messenger, to Facebook, to your stories, your email and to your Signal account. Once you're done and you're happy, you just click the home key and you go back to the home base. I hope you found that useful. InShot is a really great tool if you want to edit videos on the go. If you want to use your mobile phone as an editing source for your videos, preferably short videos, because I think long videos, you probably need a bigger, bigger visual field to actually record them. But it's a great way of editing on your mobile phone. I actually have InShot on my iPad as well. So I do have a slightly bigger visual field for that. One note to, to mention, if you do have InShot on your iPad and on your mobile phone, the videos that you do on your iPad don't sync with the videos on your mobile phone. So if you're working on a project on your iPad, you will need to actually complete that project on your iPad and download it from your iPad. And if you're working on a project on your mobile phone, you will need to finish the project on your mobile phone and then download it. OK, my name's Anita Wong. If this video helps you out, then please do give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you want more than just watching my videos on YouTube and you want to work with me further, there'll be a link underneath this video to book a free 30 minute discovery call, or you can discover my digital lab and tech school academy where I have lots of different courses that you can sign up for and also a monthly membership thank you so much for watching this video do share it with your colleagues and friends and like i said before do give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because it helps me as a video creator thanks very much then and i will see you in the next video